The first job to do before removing the radiator is to isolate it. This is done by shutting off both valves at each end. First use the cap to just tighten it down and then just nip off with a spanner. If you have thermostatic valves fitted, you need the shut off caps that would have came with the valves when new. Without these it is very difficult to isolate the radiator. We're going to use an ice cream tub to drain the water into. Sometimes it's worth cutting a slot into the side of the tub to help it fit, but on this occasion it fits onto the radiator valve perfectly. Supporting the radiator valve, loosen the nut to let the water drain into the tub. After it's been draining for a few minutes, loosen the bleed valve to let the air into the radiator to speed things up. As the tub begins to fill, just re-tighten the nut and drain into a suitable bowl. Once the radiator is drained, you just need to undo the other end and the radiator will just lift off. It may still have a small amount of water in, so have a bowl ready. Here you can see the simple hooks that hold the radiator to the wall. You may find that the valves just drip slightly and may need just nipping up again once the radiator is removed. When refitting the radiator, first of all remove any old jointing compound from the joints and just spread very thinly some new water jointing compound. With both nuts now fully tightened, we can then undo the valves to allow the water back into the radiator and using the bleed valve let any air out of the radiator. If you're unsure about bleeding radiators, see my video on bleeding radiators. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel.